I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to meet you. I absolutely love your dress. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. I love it too. <laughs> and how does it feel to be here tonight and to be celebrating, I guess, you know, investing in the next generation of filmmakers? It's just so important. And obviously the last time we all got together for this event was 2019. So I got a bit emotional on the way here because it does feel like we've kind of like come through this together. And for me, supporting the next generation of filmmakers is, I mean, there's just nothing more important to me. I do a lot of charity work, but you know, I didn't have any access to film when I was when I was small. I had to really fight my way to get, you know, access to training, access to people that worked in film. When I left, you know, university, I came down to London. I didn't know anyone at all. And so I just think that it's a really important thing to make sure that talented young filmmakers, particularly working class young filmmakers, get access to really good training. And can you tell us about your recent projects that you know have already come out and the ones you have in the pipeline? Yeah, I've just directed a film with Joanna Lumley in the lead role. It's uh, called My Week with Maisie, and it's a it's actually a it's a it's a comedy, but it's about Joanna's character has been diagnosed with cancer, and she meets a young woman called Ellie in it was called Maisie, played by Ellie Maisam in the treatment room, and it's a beautiful, beautiful story about. A, a changing of mentality, actually, and, a, and a, a new, a new outlook on life. Yeah. And why was it so important to you to tell this story? And I guess, you know, maybe it goes without saying, but why you wanted to work with such, you know, veteran of the screen, Joanna Lumley? Well, Joanna was an absolute joy to work with on my week with Maisie. It was a real, it was a real lesson in old school filmmaking. Her behaviour was impeccable throughout, and she's such a talent. And I guess for me, the story, having experienced cancer in my life, and so much of my work is in that space. My two biggest passions really are trying to change the conversation around cancer and also the conversation around film and so when this came when this was sent to me this script and I was asked to direct it I literally almost didn't have to read it before I said yes yeah and, and what do you think the impact of film can be I guess in you know you sort of read articles in the news but maybe cinema has has a different power to help us empathize with others I I think it's it's more than empathy for me Particularly growing up, I grew up in a working class town. As I said, I didn't have access to so much of what I do today as a grown up. And I feel that having identification on screen made me feel like a valuable human being, like I was completely ostracized from so many of the things that I really wanted to be involved in. But I would see a story on screen and somehow or other it would tell me that I was normal or that I was safe or that. You know, there was there was room for change in my life because I think so many really, really good stories in film are ones where there's a, a change of the person inside, you know, and they have their outlook gets changed, which is what happens in my week with Maisie. And also I think it's interesting when you have um, actors that come from comedy kind of doing serious drama. I was talking to Steve Coogan the other day, and he's another actor that kind of, I think, injects that kind of like humor, but actually the other side of humor is, is that often tragedy. So they kind of go hand in hand. They do go hand in hand, yeah. I mean, as with life, as with life, over the last couple of weeks, obviously it's been so sad losing the Queen. And and one of the things that I've taken great joy in is the fact that there's also been some jokes and stuff on social media and that that, that hasn't been judged, you know, that, and actually as long as people aren't too critical of each other and they don't use the humour to be spiteful, I think humour is a really important part of healing tragedy. It's a really important thing that we can keep a sense of humour in life and I think all of us need to remember that at the moment. Yeah. And how do you see the landscape, particularly maybe for female filmmakers right now, and, and, and why it's important to invest in that next generation. Maybe it'll be easier for, for the people that, for your generation, the one before you. It's so exciting at the moment. And, and one of, because there was this massive push about four or five years ago to get more female directors working, to a certain extent, when anyone is ostracized and not allowed a seat at the table, when they start to be allowed a seat at the table, they are 
they're not as, as skilled somehow because they, they, they haven't had the practice. And what I'm seeing with female friends of mine who work as directors and even like black actresses that I know that just weren't getting to work as much as they should do, the first year or so it was like, wow, kind of, you know, a bit skating on ice. And now it's settling down and it's just becoming the norm, which it should be. It should just be completely normal, you know, that everyone gets represented. 100%. Um, well, thanks so much for sharing all that with us and really enjoy the evening. Thank thanks so much. Let me chat to you.